Okay, different ways that I see people trying to get their weight, their mass forward to help them start the next mogul turn. Okay, so first way. They think that moving their upper body down or their chest forward in isolation is gonna get their weight forward. As you can see in here, I don't really get a shift in my center of mass very far forward because really um, it's sort of just changed the angle right here to this angle and there hasn't actually been that much weight shifted forward of my base of support. So we'll go on to the next movement. Second method, people try and keep flexing their ankles further. A couple of problems with this, <clears throat> your ski boots are quite stiff and you uh, kind of run into some problems here. Uh, two, same thing, can you see there's more of my bum just going down and squatting lower as opposed to really getting that far forward, okay, to start my next turn. Move on to number three. Oh, let me just draw this in. Watch the line of the hips go down, down, this way. Ideally, we want to be traveling this way. Next one, we look at extending the hips alone. Uh, problem with this, as you go over the bump, if you've absorbed and you're trying to travel down the hill like this, you are, with this movement alone, gonna end up with your hips going up. And if the timing is right, yeah, it's okay, but you're probably gonna come off the snow and extend and lose contact early on the other side. So you're gonna be pushing off the ground. So there's another one people are probably trying to do. Then let's have a look at probably how I uh, interpret anyway, try and make my um, forward movement to get uh, hip extension and into the face of the next mogul, which is hips forward and uh, like a contraction of the calves. So the, the movement of my hips forward really is totally linked with my ankle joint right here. And so I get uh, the tips down and my hips are forward. And now you can see that my weight is very much balanced right over the balls of my feet. So it's definitely moved forward. And all I need to do is go a tad further and I'd be falling over. You don't even need to go that far in the motors. You just gotta get the tips down and get forward again. So then the final one, if you just took, uh, so this is the good way. Notice also hips traveling very much in line with the bench. This way. And the final way, if I just <clears throat> don't have calf contraction, so I leave um, the plantar flexion or pushing the forefoot down, then I end up with this movement, which is I get my uh, weight in front of or over the balls of my feet, tips go down, but I've ended up dropping my mass down too much instead of taking it more forward and down the slope. So there's different ways uh, that I see people moving uh, to get forward at the start of a turn in moguls. So play around with all the different ways and see if you can figure out which one you use to get forward and then see if you can play around with the way that I particularly happen to view uh, really good mogul skis moving forward, which is pushing the forefoot down as the hips come forward. And with that combo, you get um, this kind of a look. So this analysis is just uh, one particular lens, one particular viewpoint at looking at how a top level mogul skier in my mind uh, makes an extension movement to get his mass forward or keep it flowing down the hill with a uh, good snow, ski snow contact. So if we stop at the position where the guy has absorbed, the reason he's absorbed at this point or is in this fully compressed position 
is because the bumps are down the hill like this, he doesn't want to be going down the hill with his center of mass bouncing around the place. He wants his center of mass to travel down in a relatively straight line. So he's got to keep his hips doing that. And if you watch in the video here, you could just see that his hips take a very direct line down the hill, but his knees and feet really do a lot of moving to uh, absorb and swallow the terrain. So let's have a look how he gets from here back to an extended position. Or basically, how does he keep his hips moving straight down the hill fluidly without coming up too much? Uh, part of it is uh, plantar flexing the foot down the slope, getting these shins driving forward. And at that same time, uh, as the hips come forward, you'll notice the upper body goes back. So the shin angle he is still relative, but notice how he's come much more upright here as the hips get pushed forward. And then a moment later, it all starts coming matched up again. You'll see right here, this is looking more similar. Again, matching back and shin right here in the fully flexed position. Here, really, you can see that driving forward shin tips down, uh, which is coming from the forefoot pushing down and the hips coming forward. And there's that upper body at a very more upright angle. So this is just my viewpoint on how uh, an elite level skier is keeping their hips moving straight down the hill, um, which is just them basically uh, syncing up how their foot and ankle works, keeping tension there, not just flexing the ankle, but actually driving the forefoot down as the hips drive forward. It's not just a hips forward movement alone. It's not just pu pushing the balls of the feet down alone. Uh, the two combine to keep the center of mass or the hips flowing down the hill in a straight line. So here we have Michael Kingsbury numerous gold medal Olympic mogul skiing champion from Canada. Uh, fully flexed position here, fairly uh, matching spine shin angles. Watch as he goes over, as he pushes the balls of the feet down, the shins and the knees drive forward along with the hips. And that ends up changing this relationship of shin and upper body so driving forward driving forward this has to kind of come back to compensate for that and allow him to be in this position where now we've got nice lined up back and shin again ready to absorb absorb both angles stay relatively congruent but then the forward movement, the movement to get the hips forward and keep the hips moving in this nice smooth pattern down the slope. He's got to really put tension in the calf to push the ball of the foot down. And at that same moment, he's driving his hips forward. It's not one without the other, it's both at the same time. Look at another elite skier and how they make uh, movements with their feet and hips synchronized to really keep their center of mass, which you could kind of imagine is the hips moving down the, the fall line in a smooth trajectory. So there's the kind of the smooth line of the, of the slope. And notice how his hips stay on that, yet there's no way you can trace his knees staying along that line even his kind of upper body changes along that line but the center of mass definitely follows it more so incredible flexibility here i would be super envious to be able to have that much uh, range but let's have a look at how he gets from this tucked up compressed position out of it so there's the hips opening 
driving over the balls of the feet, like I demonstrated in the kitchen. Now we've look at uh, shin angles, upper body angle, not aligned anymore, very much uh, upper body upright, shins driving forward, and that's coming from uh, the hips pushing forward and the balls of the feet um, pushing down. So shins and back aligned again. Hips want to keep traveling down the hill, but they don't want to go up here. If you don't make a move with your ankles, then you are going to go up at this point. And that's not going to be helpful for the next bump. You're going to be traveling too much in the air. But if you can drive the hips forward to push on the balls of the feet and at that same time work the ankle joint here to push down, then you end up with the hips traveling in a straight line down the hill. Nice one right there. Hip extension with great foot movement. Even does it in the air back up here. Watch this. Boom. Boom. Super nice skiing. So here I've tried to line up as best I could a dry land a kitchen exercise uh, to just teach myself the kind of coordination of ankle and hip moving forward or getting the hips moving straight, um, not up, not down. And it looks pretty similar to Mikael Kingsbury um, on snow. Obviously, you've got to apologize and accept that they are, you know, he's skiing, I'm not skiing, he's got ski boots on, he's moving down on snow, lots of differences. But hopefully you can just pick and see the similarities here in how his hips travel straight down the fall line, how his uh, foot ends up um, more plantar flexed, hip joints open, there's a change and a very big difference in shin angle to upper body angle, shin angle to upper body angle, um, throughout the movement to help get those hips moving forward and keeping them moving down in a straight line.